to say I'll change this story so it's saying When there's no one left to love
Peggy 18. Yes? Alan Wake. This is Tom Zane. So Alan Wake 2 is a psychological survival horror game, and the player takes on the role of two different hero characters, the title character, Alan Wake, and a new character, Saga Anderson. Saga was trapped in a horror story. The horror story wanted her dead. I'm so glad this has been recorded. <laughs> there you go! How did the how did the shoot go today? Awesome. It's 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 wonderful to have this rolling. It's been a long time coming. How long have you waited for this to start now? Ah, oh, I don't know. Too long. We waited for a hundred years. Yeah. Like in the dark place, time yeah. loses its meaning. Managed to make it feel like it's a place with a personality. It's not like a rule book for a playbook for like, okay, this is how you how you make horror. The live action elements are part of the horror for sure. I don't have the space. stories we only have victims and monsters it's not so much about the body horror it's the everyday weird things that look just perfectly fine and then a twist comes and you're like okay what's what's going on here the morning of the game awards is happening today it starts with brushing your teeth i've been working on games at remedy something like 26 years it's been a long, long journey. This by far feels like the biggest announcement. But at the same time, you know, yeah. This story will eat you alive. This story is a monster. I want to say apologies. It's been raining here in Los Angeles today. <laughs> it's on us. I was like gonna fiction, say. <laughs> fiction leaking out into reality. So sorry. I can't wait to see what you're doing with this game. I know you said to me a while ago, this was your dream project and I'm so honored that we got to announce this here at the Game Awards. And I think if a good horror manages to give you that feeling, they've really captured something elusive and almost intangible and traumatize the audience in a really, really good way. Monsters wear many faces, tagline for Alan Wake 2. Essentially what makes the environment scary is, is the atmosphere. The only rule that we had was the lyrics need to be about the story.
stay down! Wait, I need a gun! No chance! Uh, FBI! At times I've noticed that I felt uneased, even anxious. It's really interesting to bring yourself towards that edge. Yeah, that's quite a conspiracy you've uncovered. We will get a choreographer to do uh, move. The, the moves. Exactly. So I'll get to do that. You'll get to do that, yes. yes. And the winner is Alan Wake 2. I share this with the full narrative team. Direction is nothing without a team actually build it and and huge thanks to remedy team for joining us on this venture wanting to believe believing it and 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 build it uh, you know we can pull into different directions and and nothing comes out of it but when more than 100 people uh, believe in the same vision and and build something out of it, we can make miracles, we can make art, and we can be more than the sum of our parts. Uh, our world today could use a bit more of that. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, hi, chat. Hi, internet. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Twitch. Uh, I'm Vida. I'm the senior community manager at Remedy, and I will be your gracious and humble host on these streams. And as Sam said in the video that you just watched, it is all about the team. So we are talking to lots of different teams across Remedy, and we are starting with the lovely audio folks. So who am I with? Please tell me your names and a little bit about your role in Alan Wake 2. Yes. Hi, I'm Petri Alanko. I'm the composer and been along with uh, Remedy Team since uh, August 2004, I guess. So, long route. 20, 20, that's 20 years. Almost. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Are you going to get, are they going to give you a cake or something? No. We should <laughs> give you a cake. <laughs> 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 Uh, and the voice in the background is Julius, who is the community manager and the person who is doing all of the tech so I can just sit here and say stupid stuff. I There he is. Hey. <laughs> and also with Petri, we have Richard. Yes, I'm Richard Luffington. Uh, I haven't been with Remedy as long as Petri, but 2010. Uh, I'm the audio director mm. on mm. Alan Wake 2. Mm. And you are also the gentleman who picked up this BAFTA for us. Yes. So we won a BAFTA for best audio for El Alan Wake 2. How does how does that how does that feel, Richard? Uh, surreal. Yeah. It, yeah. The whole thing, the whole BAFTA ceremony, the whole winning is. I can't. I uh, yeah. I, it was such a like shock to 
hear the Alan Wake come out on that. Really? Yeah, it was it was like deer in the headlights moment. It's like, oh crap! Now I have to go on stage and say something. <laughs> so you didn't have a speech ready or anything. Um, you yeah, had a little I, I had a piece of paper, but yeah. that was had the names of the. Mm. Mm. I was mm. like, God, mm. I know. I think, you know, what was the main point of this? The whole speech was like, let's try and not make myself internet famous by saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say. Just have to, I just have to <laughs> say the names and get, get out. out of it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, that was that was uh, mm-hmm. the biggest thing. But um, mm-hmm. no, but just I mean, I was standing there on stage looking out and just going, mm. oh, this is really fantastic audio team mm. that, mm. that pulled this off. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you were at the BAFTAs as well. Yeah, and I, I was lucky that they didn't turn the camera too much, the audience. But I was crying. Oh, <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, I was crying. And uh, I remember, oh shit, it's happening again. <laughs> it's uh, okay, we have tissues. Good. No, they are disinfectious. <laughs> She's trying to make me cry even more. No, Unfair. we can get you tissues. It's okay. Any, anywho, uh, it was really emotional when Richard came back from the back room. Yeah. I, uh, and and they probably had interviewed you and everything, and yeah. and it was like, holy shit, this is really happening. It's. I mean, it's huge. Unbelievable, right? because we we actually, I didn't expect anything. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I'm almost like a, a down to earth realistic. Uh, okay. Motherfucker. It's okay, we can swear. We can swear, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. And, and <laughs> because of that, I, I, I never got, you know, um, I can take any bashing and hitting very easily, but every now and then when something good happens, you're like, I'm I can't cope with this. pieces and yeah. crying. I'm just a shitty pool on the floor and that shit. <laughs> I, that's ins- that's very relatable. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, that's just me. I'm just a, you know, soft-hearted baby boy. So... So yeah, it wasn't. You didn't expect it. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't expecting that. It was a, uh, and then when uh, Jan got, you know, his best about, art yeah, direction, yeah, yeah, artistic direction. Uh, I don't know. Um, we, uh, it's always very, how would I say, gasing well, tangible. Yeah, yeah, uh, tangible. tangible. Okay. When when something that's been concept in your head turns into a reality and people get to play it, and especially if people love it. Yeah, and uh, we don't do this because of you know we get the fancy awards or anything. We do the, this because we love it. And uh, well, for me, this is the only thing I'm even remotely good at. Something you know, it's always away from something when you're good at something. So there goes. But those two guys who are like stone faces, Richard, yeah. for instance. I I thought Richard was gonna cry. Honestly, I was. Oh. I thought because oh. because I yeah. feel like you're a very emotional guy, and I felt like you were gonna cry if you were gonna be there for like a minute longer. So I'm like, he's getting out because he's very emotional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was still in shock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but, uh, so yeah, it's it's yeah. It's crazy. Mm. But you were very gentlemanly, yes. and, and you, you also like. I I always uh, have admired your. Uh, um, you know, coolness and calmness and that, that kind of, uh, um, how would I say, as an audio director, you're quite, uh, you have leadership and, and you lead by being in the front instead of just pushing people <laughs> into the fire. <laughs> yeah, I lead them into the fire. <laughs> with, with a flamer. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyhow. Yeah, but I think uh, just to go briefly back to what we were talking about, it's not about the awards. I, that's something no. I try to tell people as well. Mm. Like, it's not mm. about, it's nice to have this, but it's mm. not about that. It's about people, it's about doing something you love and it's mm. about ultimately people recognizing mm. that you've made something that you're really proud of Mm -hmm. yeah to me the BAFTA's here because it looks pretty and we're we're proud of it and we're we're also proud of the whole audio team I'm so proud of you guys I'm so proud of you lot (sighs) but yes the reason yeah sorry go on oh no please (laughs) (laughs) oh no I was gonna say we are here to talk about audio and we are here to talk about video games and making video games and one of the reasons that we're making this series of streams is because we want to go behind the scenes we want to put people in front of the camera who do not often have a chance to talk in a relaxed and non-scripted environment (laughs) because Richard was on our dev diaries which you can watch on our YouTube channel also talking about audio so was Petri but they're both lovely guys and we just wanted to get them here in a kind of conversational setting um so uh, 
let's just kick it off. I have a bunch of questions for you. We're gonna get it going. We're gonna kick it off. We're gonna start chatting. Chat. There, there are. There will be time for your questions as well. I will call it out when the time has come to for you to ask questions. So please hold them until the end. We'll leave about half an hour for Q and A. I think. Yeah, Julius is nodding. All right, great. Um, but I think uh, the reason we are here is video games. The reason why you've been here for so long is video games because you love the job. Um, and I think one of the things, to speaking as a fan, speaking as someone who is not technically a dev, but a community manager, uh, I think one of the things that I'm proud of when it comes to Alan Wake 2 is that it does so much stuff in the medium in 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 new ways and cool ways that I've not seen games do in a single game in a in a long time. So I was going to ask like what are your favorite things that Alan Wake 2 does as a game that wouldn't be possible to do in say film or another medium? Will I start? Whoever wants to start. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was actually going to spin this round but you kind of all kind of already stolen the way that I've I'm been sorry. <laughs> It's, uh, I've read, the, read a couple of the questions beforehand. Mm -hmm. So, because I was thinking, yeah, you can always talk about games, you know, obviously it's interactive and you can, you know, you can do a lot with the interactive medium with sound. But I think Alan Wake is actually, if you look at Alan Wake in relation to other games, you basically get to do everything mm -hmm. on the audio spectrum. I mean, we have the musical, we have live action, mm -hmm. so you get that, you know, you have the film aspects of it, you have the musical, like I said already, but it's like, that is also like working with music in a very specific way and then syncing that up with the videos which are coming up. That's a really technical achievement and also like a really kind of creative way of doing that. What do you do with the sound when you're actually in a musical in an interactive environment, mm -hmm. which, which is uh, something we had to uh, kind of like work on and work out how to do that. But yeah, there's just, uh, yeah, and then you get all the gameplay and the enemies and the how you represent the characters and then you have the, all these multiple different worlds. You just have such a plethora of stuff mm -hmm. you, and stuff that you can create and there's so many different angles you can take it from mm -hmm. and so so much so much challenge in there but also so much freedom mm -hmm. to kind of build something you know conceive it in your head and go oh, what is this going to be what's mm -hmm. the dark place mm -hmm. sound like what does washington state sound like what does darkness sound like mm -hmm. you know what do the you know the shadow shadow people i can't remember the name mm -hmm. of <laughs> fade out thank you fade out thank you yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what 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 how do you how do you conceive that? And mm -hmm. there's just so much of it. And that's probably mm -hmm. what Alan Wake to me is mm -hmm. is different from doing other games or other medium. It's just incredibly broad. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I personally think that when, when there are um, live action uh, sequences, uh it, it to me it feels like you're uh every now and then temporarily sucked into a, a different role from being uh, you know, inside the world you need to um you get to sort of um absorb observe what is happening in the environment and what is happening with the characters and uh, that gives you it's a little bit like uh, you know um trying out too many perfumes and then you need to clear your nose with sniffing coffee, coffee beans, beans yeah. and, and so forth it, it's it works a little like that and when you are sucked back into you know being an actor inside yeah. the game it feels even you know more so yeah it impacts you in a different way after a live sequence mm -hmm. um and uh, just you know mixing the the graphics and the live sequence and also the the, the short movie yes uh, that sort of offers an enormous palette for a composer to you know mm -hmm. it's like a gigantic uh, sandbox in which you can build worlds and wonders and yeah. you, you can have your space spaceship over there and and titanic here no not titanic it went down <laughs> <laughs> uh, something uh, something else that uh, something think. else there or something <laughs> else here. Mm. but you you get the picture mm -hmm. that there 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 is just so much in which you can basically have fun with yeah and and i don't know it's um it's really interesting that they made the choice of in incorporating the live action yes into what was originally uh i mean Alan Wake 1 was yes. just, you know, graphics and so forth. Yeah. Bold move, and I think it paid out really well, mm -hmm. as you can tell. I think so too. So you both worked on Alan Wake 1? 
I did. Yeah, Richard, I did, did not. You? Oh, you worked on Quantum Break was your first Remedy um, game. American Nightmare. American Nightmare. I, okay. I actually remember running into him um, when we when we were starting uh, American Nightmare. Yeah. You came um, behind the corner and hey, I'm Richard Lappington. I came to work with uh, American Nightmare. Hello. Uh, that was the first thing I. Okay. <laughs> I did not long remember. long ago. Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. I was gonna ask when we talk about sort of the breadth of stuff because both of you mentioned the breadth of stuff that you can yeah. do in audio. Like, yep. how much of that? How much? How much freedom is there? Like, how much instruction do you get from the art director, from the creative director? How much room do you have to play in in the space? Well, where should we start? <laughs> Actually, um, when the concept is being defined and and if you pay close attention to the stories that are being told about the concept and you're you've shown the concept picture pictures mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything it's quite easy to you know do almost anything because uh you suck the concept in and then you have the building blocks in your head and just like tiny little lego pieces you start you know connecting to each other um not much of uh redirection or route correction yeah. needed to be done but it was it was very clearly from early on. Of course, I've been with Remedy for so long time that I know each and every eyebrow movement. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's really easy to adjust your doings mm -hmm. into what somebody wants or doesn't want. And um, they just allow quite a lot of movement within the concept. And they allow quite a lot of freedom mm -hmm. as well. Because they like people to try out stuff. And um, that's something that I value personally very much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Richard, what about yourself? Yeah, I would say the same. I always imagine my job is, audio is a kind of a post-production. We, we, we build on the foundation of the rest of the game, okay. basically. So I often think my job is actually just trying to translate what is coming from the narrative, what's coming from the art department, and try and turn it into a language, which I can then talk to the rest of the team about, like, okay, so yeah, we have this art and this narrative and this story and this arc, and then try and combine that into kind of an, like an audio language, but then then mm. kind of basically excels on those things. Uh -huh. And yeah, and I mean, we, me and Petri talked quite a lot about like, for instance, the music mm. styling and how how we contrast it in different parts of the game. And yeah, it's it's very much kind of um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Building on the on the foundation of the rest of the game, yeah, and I've yeah. taken a lot of inspiration from the other departments as well. Okay, but yeah, but definitely this translation into an audio language, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we don't get much like, oh, we need it to sound like this, or yeah. we need it to sound like that. That's mm -hmm. coming coming very much from the team. Okay, for me, it's it's not directed in that way, but it's it mm -hmm. is it is as like I was saying, it is a kind of like a translation, it's a, or an experimentation as well. Okay, so. how does that? Is that something that you enjoy experimenting and seeing what works, seeing what doesn't, how it goes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it's kind of like the basis of everything we do. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. You never really know what's going to work mm -hmm. before, before it comes up. So if you mm -hmm. have an enemy or something, we 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 get this. You know, we can look at that, look at it, and go, okay, I think that you know the footsteps should be like this, or the foliage mm -hmm. should be like this, and the attack should be like this. And some of it is kind of some of the design, particularly on the enemies, is. You're thinking, looking at it from two sides. You're looking at it for okay, what does this what does this enemy character represent? Like, you know, where they're from, like yeah. a taken. Okay, so they used to be human. You know, so you want to pull in those ideas. And there's also the gameplay side. So we need to tell the player, okay, they're going to go in for an attack, or mm -hmm. they're going to, or you they're damaged, and these kind of elements as well. So there's always this kind of like dichotomy in there. So what are we trying to say is about the character itself, or about the scene, or whatever. And what is the messaging also from the gameplay side? Uh, that sounds like you're spinning a lot of plates at the same time. Very much. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, sorry, I was going to say you can add the yeah. technology onto that as well. So there's another yes. layer. It's like, how the hell does all that work? I absolutely want to ask about the technology, <laughs> but I think it's time we look at some visual aids and some videos. Yeah. Mm. Uh, let's see what we have on the docket. Uh, well... We talked about uh, so, uh, sorry, sound effects, and we talked about music. So I think one of those we should watch first. How do we feel? And then we can we can watch it, and then we can uh, develop the conversation from there. Because I have 
bunch of stuff. Let's see what you lose. Surprises. Pool audio. Pool audio? Let's do a pool audio. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, uh, Richard? I think describe to me what we're looking at. <laughs> well, uh, uh, so, this, this is, so this is Stazio. This and... is Stazio, yeah. So basically, well, we knew this is actually taken very early on in production. Yeah. Um, and we knew that water was going to make it play a huge mm -hmm. part in the game. And mm -hmm. we need to, well. He's clearly it, enjoying himself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we just needed a, a whole bunch of water sounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is one of the first uh, recordings that we did. It was a bit of an experiment, really, to see if we could get a clean recording that we could use in the game. Um, so we hired a swimming pool. And the microphone, that microphone on there, for instance, that you can see, uh, that's a hydrophone, so mm. it's recording the underwater. Is it the blue one? Uh, the blue, the microphone, oh. the cable that goes down. And then oh, still the OK. In there. And Villa's using, like, um, compressed air mm. to create the bubble of sounds. Mm. So, for instance, in the Cynthia, Yes. Uh, when Cynthia's going under the water and then yeah. going around and then coming back up, these is the kind of raw material that we're using to make that that sonification of Cynthia. It would have been really interesting to walk out speech with those bubbles. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Next game. Next Wait, game. Yeah. Next game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're going to watch another one that is kind of uh, water related. Yeah, thank you. Um, this is the. Uh, oh. I this I, I always think this is a very funny story. So Richard, I'm gonna let you tell the story of what's going on here. Uh, your it's yourself uh, with yeah. the boom mic. Yeah, that's me with the mic. Um, so Pauli, this is a you did this a couple of years ago. Pauli was quite new to Remedy at this point, and we've got it's the same story. It's like there's so much water in the game. It's just yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So we need so much material. Kind of like oh god, we need to get all these like well, body falls, for instance, or footsteps mm -hmm. or any kind of interaction with water and go, how do we do it, how do we do it? And they go, okay, we, we, you know, we live in Finland and there's a bunch of lakes and we, there's a lot of quiet places here. So he said, okay, we need to, we probably need to go to these lakes and start recording this. And then Pauli goes, ah, I volunteer, <laughs> let me come. And I don't think he really knew what he was getting himself in for. Because it looks cold, because you're wearing a beanie and yeah. everything. It looks very cold. In basic finish somewhere. <laughs> I don't remember when this was. By the way, your boom technique is awesome. Thank you. I am not, not, yeah, I've never done it before. Really? really? Not, not like this. You're natural. Oh, thank you. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> But yeah, but then we hired a wetsuit because we figured yeah. that it's going to be cold. But this, I think this was in April, um, April, end of April. Hmm. Almost summer, yeah. almost, almost summer. summer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because there's so all of the so all of the water sounds. Not maybe not all of them that you hear in the game. Like when you're walking through water, when yeah. things are falling in water, that was recorded like this, and that was this kind yeah. of stuff. This is probably well. The, all the all the walking sounds were made from this session. So all the enemies, all the player walking in water, all body falls in water. So we did it yeah. full powerly. We threw him in a lake for about <laughs> like, exactly like this. We threw him in a lake for about three or four hours. Um, now yeah. I know how they made Fall Guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did he get sick after? He might have had a week off after. <laughs> <laughs> in this, uh, like, I I don't know very, very much about audio, so please forgive yeah. me. But is this the way it's usually done? Or is this, like, is this the way you prefer to do it? This is the way I prefer to do it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we, we use... Ideally, with enough time, we would record everything ourselves. Okay. One, it's so much fun. Recording yes. is like, you know, yeah. you can go out and throw people in lakes and yeah. it make things go yeah. boom yeah. and all that kind yeah. of stuff. It is a lot, a lot of fun recording. And also the material you get is unique. It's unique to you. It's owned by mm -hmm. us, you know, it, and it, it gives the characters to the game, how you record it, what mics you use and all that kind of technical stuff is, you know, it really, you know, we record the stuff that we like which then goes into the game as part of the character mm. of the game. So that's that's why. Um, that, that's the ideal situation. Utopia will record everything, but yeah. time just doesn't, you know. Yeah. So we use a lot of libraries as well. Okay. And a lot of library sounds, but we do try and record a lot of as much as we can. That sounds like an immense amount of effort, honestly, but yeah. also very fun. Yes, it is an <laughs> immense amount of effort and very, very fun. That's true. Can you think of like a favorite 
a favorite sound, a favorite effect that you recorded for this game? Is there, is there anything? Game. Also, Pedri, same question to you, obviously, Ooh. for the soundtrack. I would like the one that I didn't record it, Tazio, one of our yeah. sound designers recorded it. Um, and so I wish he was here to tell you exactly what he did. But I think he was putting sweets on a frying pan and then then like holding them down so there was sizzle and, and kind of scream. And he's got a video of it somewhere. Unfortunately, I don't think we have it. But um, but it's really fantastic noise. And if I remember correctly, it goes into the like the um, the, the dark the dark presence, presence sound. Okay. The part of that is this this layer of these sweets in a frying pan. Oh, but, that's amazing. But if Tazio's watching, maybe you can put it in the chat and he'll tell me exactly what it is. <laughs> um, so. Petri, you mm. also broke some pianos and you did some stuff. How? Uh, <laughs> what kind of what kind of musical instrument torture did you commit for Alan Wake? Well, um, first of all, uh, what I was trying to reach to was yes, please. <laughs> uh, I I uh, especially loved um, the Apprehension Engine and Marvin, but I wanted to have that kind of sound, but only in a larger size. Yeah. So I went to some um, whatever is Kierratus Keskus recycling, recycling center. Recycling center. And, like um, a second hand yes, kind of. Yeah, like place. Uh, some some gear is usable and mm -hmm. some are beyond repairs and but still uh, that beyond repair stuff might be useful for some such as me. And I bought a piano and this was right after the control and w before uh, Alan Wake 2 was actually in production, but I al already prepared for everything. So I decided to strip out all the wooden parts of the piano so that there was only the sound harp and the strings. Okay. And uh, back then I had access to a large uh, um, industrial hall, about okay. 2,000 uh, square meters. And I had a, a setup of contact microphones that I had um, fixed into the piano frame, the sound hub, and there was a trucki lift, um, you know, forklift. 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 Yes, that's wow. the word, forklift. We're learning uh, Finnish today. Yes, <laughs> trucki, forklift. And uh, I, I got it hanging up in the air at about three meters. So that there was like um, approximately 20 centimeters between the sound harp and the floor. Okay, so you had the piano Upright. lifted on oh, the yeah. forklift. Okay, it was yeah. it was like you know on its side because it was hanging from yeah. the upper corner. Okay, and I, I I tried to lower it down quickly so that the the lower corner hits the floor and it resonates the whole harp. Uh huh. And what I did was I sort of you know it's away from something when you're good at something. So I <laughs> mixed the handles and. It got up a little bit and then somehow uh, the lift system gave up and it came down crashing and boom, and it fell slowly over my microphones. <gasps> and when it, it was falling, it broke the floor and they had to, they had to re, re concrete. No! They had to lay new concrete. Did, did you have to pay? That? I had to pay. Oh, okay, it was yeah. the most ex expensive sample I have ever oh done. God. Did that you did you we did end up using it in the game? We right? did it. We okay. we definitely did use it <laughs> almost everywhere. When whenever there is uh, something really harsh in the low range, uh -huh. it's being used either as a impulse response in a um, convolution processor or by itself or you know reversed and everything. It's really handy when you're mm -hmm. trying to induce fear. Okay. And then the other incident with piano was right after quantum break before control yes when i was experimenting again with a really cheap piano and i had read about uh, people trying to burn pianos in order to create a special kind of a library but i i decided to go slightly further than that so again back then i stripped away all the wooden parts and i poured uh isopropyl alcohol all over oh, the yeah, strings of course and 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 uh, light it up and the flames came and i hit the frame with a hammer and you could hear that when when the strings start to expand because of the heat yes the pitch changes Ooh. Oh, it makes a really lovely sound i have to say and at some point i screwed up 
a little with the alcohol, of course, <laughs> been screwing up with alcohol. <laughs> and um, I poured a little bit too much of it and something happened with the bottle and part of the alcohol ended up on my sneakers no. and my cargo pants, pants and then um, on, on the lower section of the sound frame. And because the strings were so hot, it immediately... <laughs> And it also burnt all the dust in that room. We we are talking about what? room sized about, let's say, maybe 16 square meters. So really small, small room. room yeah. And I smell something burning. And then next thing I know is that the fire, are, fire alarm triggered out, uh, triggered off and <laughs> everywhere. And... Uh, that was a great fire alarm. Yeah, it was. That was yes. incredible. Yeah, okay. I'm a sound guy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the next thing I know, there is a, a janitor of that, uh, not Ahti, but the other guy, uh, mm -hmm. of that um, warm um, warehouse, warehouse where, yeah, yeah. where you can rent your space. Yes. I, 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 I kept my tour gear in yes. there. So it was a natural space to record that piano. Oh and by alarm and the janitor and the janitor doesn't look at me like he doesn't say he just watches me like <laughs> like staring me to death and all i could say don't call the police i'm moving out i'm moving out <laughs> and only then i noticed that because i had a special idea for the piano library i had all kinds of adult tools there, Andy. Adult tools? Can oh. you elaborate what what you mean by adult tools? Yeah, uh, well, uh, those that... Richard knows what I'm talking about. Might rape quite a lot, from ranging from, like, you know, a small one to... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the only thing was that they needed to vibrate, like, really vigorously. Okay. Like, aggressively. Yeah. And the dude watches those, he watches me, and I'm... Oh, the, jan the janitor, the janitor is still yeah, here. I'm, I'm oh, putting right. out the flames and all over the place. So, um, so it's it's a burning, it's a burning uh, and there room, are and there's adult uh, tools, uh, yes, and a burning piano, and you on fire, yes, and the janitor's just like, yes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that very evening I moved away from there and had to store all the gear temporarily in my garage. And uh, I rented a uh, next space after a few weeks um, after this had happened. And uh, I carried all the stuff there only to notice that the same janitor was working there. Oh, God! <laughs> did he recognize you? Did yes, he did. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. And uh, I, I had to sign quite a set of papers <laughs> because of what had happened in the previous place. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but. I still have gear there, so we are in good conditions. And where did those sounds get used? Oh, they were used in control. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. I remember because I remember that story about yeah, yeah. control. Yeah. There's a question for both of you. How do you get these ideas? Like, how did Tatsio get the idea of putting um, sweets in a pan and seeing what they sound like? Or is it just again a matter of experimentation? Like, let me do this thing and see what what it sounds like. See what happens. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure where Petri gets his ideas from. <laughs> well, v VHS tapes. Yeah. VHS tapes. <laughs> yeah. That, what about you? <laughs> Uh, I've given everyone the giggles. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Where do we get our ideas from? I don't know. Um, I think it's just messing around with stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of the time when you're making something in the kitchen, or you know, you, you just go, mm -hmm. "Oh, if I put that, like, if you put water in a saucepan and yes, yeah. and move it, it goes, ooh, ooh you know, it's mm -hmm. really nice sound." Mm -hmm. And you know, you remember that and think, "Oh, I need that for," and then you go and record it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I think it's, it's just pure experimentation, just keeping mm -hmm. your ears open for mm -hmm. things that. Sure. Yeah, cool. being playful and yeah. uh, and you know relating to everything like a child would. Yes, yeah. and and I have mm -hmm. my so-called uh, play moments with my you know synths and and recording gear and everything, and usually when you record something really interesting, you immediately can hear that okay, this could make a decent you know melody mm -hmm. or a part of that melody mm -hmm. or something like that. Um, I'm sure something happens with Richard yeah. as well. Uh, things start to resonate and you can almost see uh, how it's going to be processed in order to yeah. have something that you are trying yeah. to achieve. Yeah. And, and that's, um, I don't know, 
up. It's a sort of a, I would say, curse and a gift because you're yeah. constantly working. Yeah. But you are also constantly having a great time. Yeah, okay. So it's hard to switch off. It's hard to stop noticing what things sound like. Yeah, I, yeah. Guess, I guess it's a bit like, you know, a photographer look, wanders around yeah. and looks for pictures. We're going like, oh, mm, that car door sounds good. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> you know, like, where where would you use a car door? On a car. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, I, don't, yeah. I was thinking of, you know, Foley work and how they used to, like, scrunch up cabbages to, mm. you know, simulate body horror and stuff like it's, that. It's, yeah, well, there's, um, yeah, sounds can be used. I mean, what you, what you hear and what you relate it to can be something completely different mm -hmm. when you record it. I mean, there's, yeah, there's a thing about there's a lion sound in everything, which is okay. kind of a joke. But it's, uh, yeah, it's because the lion has got such a deep, guttural like vocalization so it's it we tend to use that sound a lot in anything mm. that needs to sound powerful mm -hmm. it's irrelevant what it is can you do lion i'm not going to try and do a lion, okay no. all right no, fair no. enough no. um coming yeah. from like experimental sounds coming from a stuff i want to let's you mentioned the marvin and the apprehension yep. engine so let's look at that video real quick if you were here from the start of stream you might have seen it um and we're going to talk about what we're seeing and why we did that and what those things are and everything uh so let's wait for you to cue it up there we go so I was here. Uh, there is a there, there is a humming sound on the bottom of the track that you might hear. That's the camera moving. Everything else that you hear is Petri making noises. So Petri, can you tell us what you're doing here? Uh, yeah. Um, usually instruments they tend to have a really really like a precise set of overtones, and they are predictable predictable yes thank you sir thank you they are predictable and and way too much in in some order or they are tied to a tuning scale or whatever but these machines they they rely only on let's say uh, the resonance of the raw material itself for instance uh, the thing on the left that's Marvin uh -huh. actually okay. mega Marvin and those rods I'm bowing there constantly, they are really tight, they are like steel. And because of they are of different length, they each produce a different set of overtones. And so if I squeeze the bow over two, you get, you know, two playing at once and, and it's behaving more or less like a cello from hell, <laughs> okay. so to speak. And uh, there are resonator springs that are horizontal there and then the upright springs they are more or less like um, resonators for anything hitting the the base mm -hmm. but they also could be bowed but you know the bows tend to break when they hit the you know the, 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 the grooves yeah and then on the right the apprehension engine if you have heard the movie or seen the movie which or which it's one of my favorites yeah yeah nice one uh, that is that instrument was uh, I think it was introduced in that movie. Okay. And each of them are being made uh, custom built for the customer, so mm -hmm. there are no two alike. Yes. Yeah, they so are all kind of a little bit different. It, it consists of two. Uh, let's say it's not exactly a guitar neck, but a violin neck and maybe an, a viola neck, and then. Um, uh, spring reverb and microphone preamp and the spiral over there yeah that's one nasty thing because it makes a beautiful sound but it's a one hell of a thing to try to you know produce sound uh -huh. uh, constantly okay and it requires an extreme amount of resin in your bow in order to create the friction to okay. make it vibrate and they don't produce any nice sounds at all they are like horror mm -hmm. um come to life or yeah you know in a, a horror in a physical form let's put it this way personally i think horror is something that happens in your head but you can uh, sort of lure that fright or horror or fear out with certain kind of sounds and those two machines are exactly the right tools for that and were those made uh, custom for, for Remedy in that Yes, okay. yes they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I spent quite a few hours getting to, you know, getting used to them, but it required, I, I know, to be a decent piano player, you need 10,000 hours. Yeah. To be, you know, like a hobby pianist or, or whatever. 
but 10,000 hours with those isn't, well, it's not even a beginning. Mm -hmm. Because of their nature, they are really raw, they aren't really like instruments, they are, well, they are sound machines and, and, and thus they're the, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we put this on tape because this was, uh, all of this footage is from, as far as I understood it, like we were having like an experimental session where yeah, yeah. you were yeah. getting used to the instruments and seeing yeah. what they could do and stuff and then you bowed too hard and In, the yeah. string snapped yeah. and everyone laughed. Everybody laughed, yeah, except me. Yeah, but still. <laughs> but but uh, I I think I have some like four to five hours worth of material mm -hmm. on my hard disk somewhere. I managed to clear approximately two hours, of which I did f a few virtual instruments, okay. which I basically used from the keyboard, um, just to be able to reproduce something. Yeah. Uh, and there is all another three hours of you know all kinds of unho unholy, ungodly sounds somewhere on my hard disk that I'm going to... One day I'm going to edit that together into a neat package of samples. That sounds amazing. So, since we're on a roll of talking about horror and what horror sounds like, Richard, is this this is your first horror game that you worked on, was it? This is my first horror game, yeah. So how, how does... how do you figure out what horror sounds like? <laughs> Well, that's, that's a very that's an easy question to well, answer. Well, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> let's, let's work on it together. <laughs> how do you let's let's start with an easier one? How did you figure out how to make rain sound like rain in this game? Oh, that's an easy question to answer. Um, rain, like, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> We've talked a little bit about water already, but rain, yes. rain is is effervescent throughout the entire entire game. It's if I have a choice, I would never do a game with rain in it again. That's so <laughs> fair. No, that's so fair. It's such a, it's such a major element because yeah. it basically, when it's, well, you know, that in real life, you know, you go outside, it's raining, it dominates the soundscape. Mm -hmm. um, and we have these environments, and we have a semi, semi open world, I could say, and it has a dynamic weather system, so it rains at different mm -hmm. lengths. So when we're building audio for the environment, we have to take into account, like, okay, so it's not raining, it's windy, it's raining, and it's raining and it's windy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. and now there's a storm, you know, mm -hmm. and it can be anything within within a single environment. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to build a lot of like layers to the environment, basically. So I don't know how deep I'm going to go into this, but let, let's see. Go let's, we as can, deep as you want, let's we go. Can, we, can, we can talk about this for the next two hours. <laughs> <laughs> easily, easily. It's, it's, it's quite easily. But, um, so we tried a lot of stuff mm -hmm. when we were trying working this out. And it, it honestly took us um, about a year and a half to come up with a solution. A year and a half to figure out, right? To figure it out. And okay. we went through a lot, a lot of different things. And there were so many different elements we had to kind of work on and be aware of and be aware. So basically, rain is noise. So one of the biggest things we had to deal with is, is if you're if it's raining outside and there's a lot of noise, obviously, because it's raining, and then how do we have to make sure the dialogue's heard, for instance, mm -hmm. which is a very sounds really logical right but mm -hmm. but actually you need to cry, find the right texture of rain to make it fit against the dialogue and make sure the footsteps are heard and make sure so that's that well that was the first thing that we were started yeah. working on we, we played a lot with ambisonic beds um and working that but that didn't work very well for mm. us um so yeah but once we kind of worked out what the bed was going to sound like we then went okay so now it's kind of raining here and we can get it mm. in different levels mm. we're going like okay but there's a metal tin can over there um <laughs> that's, sound different, we, right? that's gonna sound different from this mm. yeah um, so yeah. we go okay so how are we going to get all these you know or we're mm. walking on concrete walking mm. on concrete mm. sounds different rain on concrete different sounds size. different leaves on trees, trees or yeah different. oh yeah rain on water is another one's a lot of water in the game different so, sound as well yeah yeah different sound so then we started working on like okay how are we going to get our rain to basically react to the to make it feel real within the game. Mm -hmm. So we, we tried a lot of different things. Um, we tried the first thing we actually tried was just basically detecting everything that's around the player and going, okay, that bit's metal and that bit, and then playing a bit of metal rain on there, a bit of you know, okay. a bit of concrete rain on there. But we found that it was a, it kind of it was weird because you walk past it. And the detector would go, it would go behind you mm. and then suddenly snap. So that one would disappear and then it would snap into mm -hmm. the next object that it would find. And it was, it just felt really artificial. Um, and then we thought, okay, 
there's all these tin cans in the game. So let's just put reins, you know, just use that that model and just create a prefab and put all the mm. all, you know, just the tin can rain and you know and all the metal rain or the or the wood table and we just add the, the sounds directly onto the prefab. So everywhere there's a table, you'll get wood. Mm -hmm. And then we go into the game and go, of course, the game is absolutely full of objects. And then the game wouldn't run. You know, it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're trying to play 2,000 sounds in this scene. Yes. This isn't going to yeah. work. Okay. You know? <laughs> so so we, um, we, we, uh, we knocked that one on the head. But yeah, mm -hmm. but each one of these things I'm talking about, it took like, you know, it took a little bit of experimentation. Mm -hmm. Is it going to work? Mm -hmm. And it took a few months to actually try out and to realize that, okay, nah, <laughs> this, this is not yeah. going to work. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing we kind of decided in the end that okay we can go through all the systems that we can and we could probably get something quite good with the system but it's probably going to be quicker just to go in mm. and just add the sounds that we want into the world mm. on the on the rain and then just have it change based on the amount of rain that's there and the one of the things that i was because we've actually this game is we were the like the most important audio call it a skew but it's like a um like rendering that we were doing is actually yeah. in Atmos. So that was our number one. Atmos. Atmos. Mm -hmm. So we go, we want this game to sound good in Atmos. And of course with rain, it's like, you know, it's fully encompassing. So we, what we realized quite, quite fast with Atmos is that Atmos gives you a lot of detail in, in the 3D space. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you can kind of differentiate, but you need a, quite a lot of movement to make it work. So what we found was actually the just spotting the rain in, just like actually going and physically placing them into the world map, mm -hmm. works a lot better because you get this movement between between the sounds, and you, they, so it's continually changing mm -hmm. as you walk through the world. It's kind of very dynamic, and I think that really is, to me anyway, that's like one of the the keys to mm -hmm. why it yeah. works and why it kind of like works the way it is. Uh, just another fact about Atmos as well. Please go for it. it. Yes, yes. Is uh, when you when it's raining and you're in a forest, we have the tree canopy rain above you. So mm -hmm. if you play in Atmos, you can hear mm. the, the tree canopy, and that disappears, of course, when you're not under the tree canopy. Which I is a nice little touch that I yeah really pleased in there. To be <laughs> and, and you have to remember, yeah. this is all dynamic. Yeah. Yes. So, so the this film guys have it so easy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this yeah. is all dynamic. So yeah. it changes oh, depending on where I'm walking as the player and yep. so on, right? Yeah. 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 And one of the other things we worked a long time trying to get right. And these are all the small little details that kind of bring the world alive. But yeah. It's, it's like, okay, we're talking about rain outside, but what happens when you transition from outside to inside? Mm. And you know, you, you go through the doorway, but then you still want to hear what was happening outside when you're through the door. So yeah. you can't just turn mm. it off. Mm. So we're basically folding down and then playing it from the doorway as you go in, which is a really nice effect of, that Josh actually came up with. Josh had a GDC talk. Yeah, he uh, did. Yeah. He was talking about um, the mind place. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think you did. I just think you did an incredible job with with audio because the whole Pacific Northwest, when you're in mm. the forest, when you're going down the hill and the soundscape changes and it starts being like super sunny and then it's like getting darker and then it starts drizzling a little bit and then it starts full on raining. It feels so like it feels real. It feels immersive. It doesn't feel like I'm playing a video game. It feels like I'm walking through a forest and it's starting to rain. It's incredible. So well deserved, BAFTA. Well deserved, all the other awards that you got. <laughs> yeah, true. We can take a break. Mm -hmm. Okay. We uh, thank you everyone for joining us. We are still going to be here. Don't leave. We are going to take a short break to play some ads uh, and be right back, and so the lads can hydrate. And it's very sweaty in this room. Um, we'll be back. We'll be back in about five minutes. Minutes, so hydrate, take your meds, uh, put your laundry on, do whatever you need to do, and we'll be right back. See you then. In the dark, miles apart, made a promise that I'm coming out alive. Too far. I will never lose myself again. Oh, I, I was calling you. Did you hear me? I lost my way. Lost my way.
myself and I don't need to hide My foolish pride Pay the price I will never leave again I'm by your side I was calling you Did you hear me? I lost my way Lost my way Dark, I'm pushing through. Through the end, I'm reaching you. Though they keep saying that my baby is gone, I keep on loving you. For my love's the light holding you tight. everyone for waiting thank you hope you got hydrated drank a bit had a little snack i don't know but we're back we are talking about audio and music i'm here with richard the audio director at remedy and pedro alanco the composer for alan wake 2 we're chatting all things audio i still have some questions for the guys and then we will go on to your questions um so we were talking about rain <laughs> i was one of my uh that was going to be actually one of my questions like what is the most challenging thing on this project and how did you overcome it and i feel like rain might be the answer uh, water in general yeah water, <laughs> anything to do with water was like yeah it's just super super difficult mm -hmm. even even walking in water is difficult to do because yeah, it, it just yeah how do you get it all to work fluidly when you know make it sound correct you know footsteps are easy because you just like one footstep but water mm. ripples out and it mm. kind yeah. of all overlays and you just end up with so much sound playing all the time just for one person walking yeah, so it's really difficult. Yeah. We were having some of this conversation off mic while we were on break, which is like uh, audio 
see people take a lot of people i say me as a as a naive gamer i'm going to put myself into that into that position i take a lot of this stuff or used to before i knew about how games were made take it for granted because i'm like just put just put the rain just put the rain sound in yeah. uh, <laughs> and it's, not, and it's it like some people do all that. <laughs> just press the button and put the rain sound in. Um, and it's like it's not like that because everything reacts with everything else. Yeah. Like mm. one of the examples is like yes, yeah, stepping into the water or yeah. opening a door and stuff yeah. like that. No, no, this is yeah, this is true. And you also one of the reasons we spend so much time with rain as well. If you actually look at Alan Wake as a game, it's really slow moving. It's all about like, looking at the different details and the details mm -hmm. in the world. And that's why we wanted to go to such lengths to kind of make it mm -hmm. as special as we can make it, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we knew it was going to be the thing, mm -hmm. which, is, <laughs> which is why we spent so much time on it. Yeah. Um, what was I going to ask? Yeah, well, Petri, what about you? What was, uh, what was a big challenge for you while working on this? <sighs> Turning fear into a sound or yes. an instrument or music because it's all psychological and everybody tends to have their own interpretation of yes. how to be afraid, mm -hmm. so to speak. But uh, in case of somebody gets really, you know, frightened suddenly, like, ah! I'm sure you have something <laughs> in your mind. It's not just your physical effect or trying to avoid me and taking you, but I'm, I'm sure there is something that, you know, went through your head when that happened. Yeah. And turning that into a sound. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. Not even just my head, but like my entire body, because yes, I yes. go like this and yes. my stomach clenches and yes. stuff like that. Yeah. And, and there is also a delay when, when I did what I did and when you did your reaction. Yes. Uh, that's a neural reaction time okay and for instance on, on on screen you need to take that into account if you are actually trying to emphasize the attack or the reaction if you are emphasizing the attack put the sound effect right on the spot when something hits you or if you want the gamer to feel like really frightened or reacting to what happens then you emphasize the reaction so all kinds of you know psychological tricks yeah. Put into sound, more or less. That's more or less like, um, you know, a, a practical mm -hmm. way to do it. But then uh, when you are dealing with the feeling itself, it's much more, it's intense and not so emphasizing, not so underlining. It's more like a subjective, a pointing, uh, hinting vaguely towards a direction. Yeah. And taking that and trying to emphasize or amplify that, that's the core of it all and especially with Alan being trapped in a dark place for such a long time mm -hmm. and things had gone bananas many 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 times we had to take uh, into account that maybe his psyche or his mental side has changed somewhat during the 13 oh, yeah. years oh, yeah. yeah hey you're in a your <laughs> shit hits the fan for 13 years so yeah something might happen and uh, uh, trying to, you know, put that into music or sound, well, first into sound, mm -hmm. and it required a lot of, you know, what I have done with Apprehension Engine and, and Marvin, and process everything through that. And then uh, I wanted to induce the sense of unease or trying to, you know, evoke feelings towards uh, something isn't right. I recognize this, but it, it isn't exactly right. And uh, which is what I did with the overtones. I tried to tune the overtones away from the natural spectrum. So it resembles, for instance, um, a brass section or strings okay. or cello or whatnot. But there is something really disturbing about it. And then trying to play something not according to 12 tone scale, but maybe 15 tone scale or just 12 tone scale. But uh, instead, you know, tuning a few intervals here and there, or actually the few keys of the 12 tone scale away, slightly under or above or more above or more below. Uh, playing around with tunings and not trying to offer people everything as you know ready chewed i i wanted to let their mind do the trick yeah and and, and fill in the blanks so yeah. to speak but we needed enough um hints towards the direction yeah. in order to that to you know happen mm -hmm. how was it for your team richard how was it also how was it collaborating 
because because like th there's different horror soundscapes right in the dark place and in the Pacific Northwest because it's yeah. a very different yeah. type of horror. Yeah, yes, yes, it is. Um, so the way the way that I try to set up the audio team to actually make make that difference is is because the, they they're sort of contrasting on the sound effect side and on the music side. I'd say mm. is that the Pacific Northwest is um, it's kind of like an epic landscape, very beautiful. You know, an yeah. idyllic place, mm -hmm. with the, yeah, and then you have the element of horror, of course, in there. But it's, it's a naturalistic place, so you get a lot of animals and a lot of rain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the theme, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, yeah. wind yeah. and trees moving and things like and that. Things like that. So we, we try and keep it very tangible and real, and, yeah. and kind of like even hyper real in a way. And then if you spin that over onto the dark place, and the dark place is an imagined environment, it's written, it's written by Mr. Wake. So that. The, the way that we approach it is, is, is use a different set of words basically to, 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 to describe that, which is that it's imagined and dreamlike mm -hmm. kind of environments. And then we take the sound design and the music as, as well, and, and kind of, particularly in the dark places, twist the idea of what something should be. So it's recognizable, but not quite recognizable. So, yeah, and that so builds up the basis of the, of the entire, and then we get these ideas basically from the narrative of the game. So mm. what is what is the what is the narrative beat? What are the main themes in there? What are we trying to tell? And then take those ideas and kind of twist them into something. I want to hear more about twisting things in, in audio wise in the dark place. What else mm. can you can you tell us about it? Can you tell us about what? Yeah, no, I, did, I said that right. <laughs> yeah, we're twisting words yeah. <laughs> into, the, into the new meanings. Um, yeah, so I'm just trying to think of a good example. I, mm -hmm. my, one of my favorite places in the dark place is uh, just out in the New York streets. Yes. And this was done by Tazio and Guli. Mm -hmm. And they, those guys did an amazing job. On so Tazio and Guli are our uh, sound designers? Uh, two, two, yeah, two principal and sound designers. Okay. Tazio was the, if you've joined us from the beginning of the stream, Tazio yeah. was one of the lads with the bucket in the um, in the pool. Yes, he yeah. was. So it wasn't a fart, it was a it bubble was a coaster. It was, a big, it was a big fart. I'm very immature. When yeah. I first saw that video, I could not stop giggling whenever. Yeah. Yeah. We, have, we all have done that. <laughs> But yes, yeah. sorry, uh, Tatsio and Ghoulie and the Dark Place. I forgot what I was going on. <laughs> <laughs> Started talking about Tatsio and farting. It's like completely gone wrong. <laughs> so when we were talking about how to build that scene and how to actually make that real, well, we were just going, okay, what are the land landmarks within this? So for instance, one of them is a subway station. Yeah. And we go, okay, but we want to draw the player in towards the subway station and like, um, somewhere around and also we have the alley as well and oh, oh the telephone ring actually maybe i'll use the telephone yes from the beginning as the example because that's the best one. that's fantastic so the idea behind that telephone so it's obviously when you come up and go into the new york streets mm -hmm. for the first time you're supposed to be able to hear it from the from the when you're still in the basement yes. and you're coming up like a doorway and leading to me uh, the idea is that it's the attractor to yeah. get to the, to the cinematic and in way i think it works really really well but as the the basic design principle that is which I was which I gave is like when you hear it, you're, it's supposed to be kind of like slightly twisted or it's not really, you know, where's it coming from? Mm -hmm. It's not really directional mm -hmm. and and modified like slightly tuned. I mean, you were talking a lot about out of tuneness, you know, <laughs> using microtones and stuff. So we we're using these kind of techniques there, and as you go up. As he goes towards it, it turns into a more tangible and real mm -hmm, element mm -hmm. within the soundscape. Mm -hmm. But we do it with a lot of lot of different things. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, there's also, as you can see on the video now, mm -hmm. that neon light which yeah. has illumination, it has mm -hmm. a sound on it. But when you're far away, it's kind of much more ethereal. And, mm -hmm. and as you get closer, it becomes more tangible. And we're using these different sound elements as kind of attractors for the next beat, mm -hmm. or like the, the important narrative. Yeah points within the games to try and drive the player into the, you know, give them a sense that they're going in the right direction. I think it works incredibly well with the phone because it's exactly yeah. like you said, It when you're far away you hear it, but it sounds wrong, yeah. right? It sounds like a phone ringing, but we, you know, yeah. weird. And then the closer you get to it, the more it sounds like a real phone. Yeah. Um, so yeah, amazing, amazing job. Yeah, and just in the new work, well, mm -hmm. across the entire dark place, one of the one of the design principles is it's, it's supposed to sound like a, a or a dream that you kind of half remember. Mm. You know, you remember 
of being there, but then what does that sound like? Mm -hmm. You remember the dream itself, but it's all disjointed and broken up. So th this is, yeah, and then you contrast that, of course, with the Washington State, which is mm -hmm. hyper -realistic. Yeah. So then how do you, if you've got hyper-realistic sounds in Washington State, but then you, in Pacific Northwest, but then you have the enemies who are taken and kind of sort of coming connected to the dark place, how do you bridge that connection from an audio perspective? Uh, we, the way that I was thinking of this is there's basically three main sonic elements within the game. It's like a really high level pillar. We have, we've talked already about dark place and mm -hmm. then the, the Pacific Northwest, but also uh, there's this, there, there, there is darkness, that, which is a representation of horror effectively, and that has its own audio signature. Yes. So uh, again, as you can see from the video now, there's, there's the darkness barrier. Mm -hmm. It's going to come up. Yeah, yeah it's going to come up. Mm -hmm. So this is kind of a soundscape yeah. we were using uh, as a, like a kind of a basis for this kind of darkness representation. A lot of screaming, a lot of voices. Um, uh, particularly, I mean, guttural voices was one of the key elements. Okay. I mean, there's, there's so much dialogue in this game, but dialogue not not just like the main dialogue. We're gonna have to talk about this, Richard. Oh yeah. We're gonna have to talk about what you're saying. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry to sorry to interrupt you, but let's talk about the musical. Sure. Because that is. So incredibly ambitious. I mean, the Astray Maze in Control was an incredible feat of audio and like dynamic sound and everything. But th like this is another, completely another level. So how, how <laughs> is my question? Because you walk through it and the the the, the music follows you and everything feels. It doesn't feel like it's waiting for you. It feels like it's it's reacting to you and mm. like it's leading you and everything. So please, please take over. Please tell me. <laughs> tell me about this. Well, it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, God, where do I start? So I don't want to give too much of the magic away. So if I tell you how it works, you kind of like would kind and of- And then, then, then it ruins the magic? Yeah, okay. Yeah. But, um, but I can basically, I mean, Obviously, the song is written for us, and we work. Yes. We work with the post of the fall, yes. or all gods of Asgard, depending on uh, on making the track. Um, it works in a relatively simple way. I'm afraid to say. Don't ruin. Try not to ruin the magic, but also give us a little bit of of, of juicy details that I, as a layperson, do not nope. know. <laughs> yeah. So we have the, the we have the song sections which have the lyrics in mm -hmm. and then we have the in between sections so the song sections which the lyrics are basically just a, a linear like it's just part of the song and then we just basically have a, a series of segmented loops that go in between these sections but i think maybe as it, one of the things which i really really like so when we when yeah. we were doing this we had the music track playing and we were playing through it and going like this just doesn't feel interactive the music's playing, but it just feels like it's, it's just, you know, in front of your face. Mm -hmm. It doesn't connect it to the, the, you know, you can see these big Mr. Door and Alan Wake singing on the screen. We're going like, how do we connect this music with that? And we worked out a way of basically extracting the, the, the vocals and placing it on the videos. So they're actually 3D placed in the world to a certain degree based on who's singing and when. We we only do it with Door and Wake, okay. so we don't do it for the actual poets. Yeah, yeah. But it really, once we did that, it suddenly made it feel like it was part of the environment mm -hmm. and actually work much, much better than just having a 2D track playing no in the background. Story, only yeah. How long monsters. did that take to get right? <laughs> well, not, not, not to get right, but to get to a point where you were like, yes, this is this is um, what I've had in my head. This is yeah. what I want, finally. <laughs> yeah, actually, we did it one day before shipping. <laughs> we actually, we calculate time differently in Finland. There are minutes and hours and days and weeks and years, and then there are livers. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not really. <laughs> basically consume two livers yeah. while doing that. No, not really. <laughs> okay. so, it, well, actually, Josh, one of our senior sound designers, basically worked out. It took him a few weeks to make it okay. work. Mm. But we were talking about it for like, can we do this? Is it possible? How mm. much work is it? Should we try? Mm -hmm. Do we have time before we ship? That yeah. kind of, those mm. kind of questions. But he, he turned around and, and got it to work, which was phenomenal and it really helped. But the other thing, I think, as well, the music 
collapses and expands. Like when you interact with the TV, it yeah. collapses mm. into the TV. Yes, it does. Yeah. And that was another thing we were debating for a long time. Like, how do we get it to feel like the music's going back into the TV and coming out of the TV and and, and feel basically you're interacting with the score as a player. So you, you press a button, and something tangible happens. I think it really helps. You know, just kind of tie the scene together. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I remember seeing the scene first time, the yeah. prototype of it. I, I remember giggling like a small child. <laughs> yeah. How? How? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I think I saw it for the first time when it was actually done. And so I played it in the game. I've, I've seen things in Slack where people are like, hey, I'm working on this bit of the musical. And I'm like, no, I can't. I can't look at it mm -hmm. um, until I play the final thing. And But I remember being in the actual, like, live live action recording of the musical and and listening to the song and seeing everything happen and thinking oh my god this is going to be huge mm -hmm. this is going to be massive and yeah incredible incredible job uh how do the two of you as in audio remedy audio and the great petri alango how do you two work together because i think from from what from everything that we've talked about right it seems like you work in in several different ways, like there's audio, and then there's music, and then there's like, I don't know, tell me. I, I wouldn't say that we, yeah, I, I don't, when I'm working on these games, mm -hmm. I don't really differentiate between dialogue music and okay. sound mm -hmm. effects mm -hmm. in a tangible, Got it. this mm -hmm. isn't it. Mm -hmm. um, I try and look at the game as, as a whole, mm -hmm. and how music is, music is basically just organized sound, like, you know, sound, sound effects is kind of like random sound, mm. if you like. That makes sense, yeah. And and then how do we stick those two together? Because when you're looking at the final product, you've got to make sure that the music and the dialogue and the, and the sound effects all gel into, in, you know, mm. kind of all sit together nicely. Yes. And that's, yeah, so from my, from my kind of perspective, I kind of see, see Petri as just an extension of, of mm. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very much so. And I know that you were working a lot with the sound design as well. We share a lot of assets, yeah. like the Marvin and the... Yeah, yeah. We, we, we kind of sling files backwards and forwards okay. and talk a lot about different teams. And actually, I, I usually like to think that everything that I'm offering and sending to the team are basically Lego blocks with people can have fun with. Yeah. And they know what to do and I'm not really... I know some composers are really direct about how something is going to be used. and. Uh, I actually like to see how something I've done ends up remixed mm. within the game. It, it feels like it's a constant, you know, remix game, <laughs> basically, with something I've written. Of course, the cinematics are one thing, but when it comes to, you know, in-game audio, uh, uh, I don't see myself as a, uh, you know, expert on that, and, and people, at least here at Remedy, they know exactly what they do and what they require, so I'm offering a shitload of stems to them and yeah. they basically take this and that and, and scram them together and, and it sounds like eighth wonder of the world. It does. It does. We had a, a well, basically when, uh, when we were developing the game, at some point we realized that Petri was not way who's going to be able to do the entire thing on his own. So we actually built a small team behind yeah. behind Petri, which is yeah. a shout out to Dobry Kotcher and Killian. Oh, Killian Oser, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 so I'm, you had a you had you were working with a whole team for this one. Let's talk about that. Uh, yeah, um, I basically owe my sanity to <laughs> Kocha do, Dobry and, and, and Killian actually, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and Richard and we led. There were a few times when when I had to visit Remedy every Monday or Wednesday or Thursday when there are pancakes. Mm -hmm. And uh, just to maintain my sanity, basically, just to exchange a few words and get some, you know, uh, support. And, and these projects, they tend to be quite long. You know, you're not doing this in a week or yeah. two. Uh, I, I can't remember, was it like three, half, four years with Alan Wake 2? I can't yeah. remember exactly. But long time. So. Having a working team is as essential for everything that we have achieved. There's no point of somebody trying to take, hey, I did the music. Yeah. It doesn't go like that. Mm -hmm. it, there, there's always a gigantic team behind yeah. something like that. And um, I, having seen the guys work and having heard the results they have done, 
my my you know my respect is huge. I can't find the right words here. <laughs> I mean, that's why we're here, right? We're here to um, gas up or to, to talk about the teams because it's not, I mean, we can only put, fit so many people in the room, but it's it's all about the teams in the end. But I want to pivot once again and talk about music some more. And I want to talk about Utan U. Did I pronounce that right? Yeah, plausible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I want to talk about Nightless Night, the song. Yeah. And I want to... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Okay, thank you. And I want to talk about working with Marty, uh, a legend in uh, Finnish acting. Yeah, truly a legend. I, I admire admire him a great deal. He, uh, <laughs> he usually comes in and is very practiced and goes into a vocal booth, three takes, and that's it. Uh, usually what we end up using uh, is mostly one take, that is uh, the cold shivers, I guess. Truly, from... truly goosebumps during yeah, that song. Goosebumps yeah, goosebumps there. Uh, Marty is a great performer and um, in Marty's case uh, it's more important to get the performance rather than find exactly the right tuning. Of course, he stays in tune. I'm not saying that, and yeah. we don't require auto tune. Actually, auto tune or, or melodyne wasn't used with Marty's vocals. Yeah, not here, neither tango, in, right? in in the tango yeah. In control. Yeah. So, um, he's been on stage. He's been performing with an orchestra, so he knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And because he sort of entered the character before he went into the booth, it was you know a matter of minutes and we were done. It was yeah. incredible. Yeah. So tell me about the song, because I remember before we recorded with Marty, you <laughs> did the guide. So you recorded your own vocals yeah. to be like, this is what it should kind of sort of sound yeah. like. And I heard it and I came to you and I said, this is amazing. And, oh. and you were like, no, no, no. You, you were acting yeah, no, like, oh. no, 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 I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a vocalist. Yeah. To say the least. Yeah. Uh, although I think that being able to sing is more like a state of mind rather than the exact technique, because you can lure, lure your brain into, you know, functioning like a singer's brain. I'm tone and, deaf, and I agree. <laughs> <laughs> and and and, and uh, we made um, we made really um, careful selection when it comes to uh, the style or genre of mm -hmm. the song. Uh, in in control, we did a tango. And this one is more like uh, twang, or I would say it's a guitar combo piece. Um, okay. Both genres were very popular in Finland during the 50s and 60s, mm -hmm. and even in early 70s. So we are sort of paying homage to Finnish, uh, you know, cultural history and folklore, basically. And I guess even my father played guitar in one of these twang bands back oh, in the really? day. But that was long ago. And were, I know, they, did they, were they famous? Uh, no, okay. and he do doesn't want to talk about it. Fair enough. We <laughs> won't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. And, um, yep, yeah, uh, it's uh, based on um, what Finnish music would sound if the track was made, or actually it was based on the fact that if the track was composed in 60s, but then achieved into a audible form later on, okay. but with the period instrumentation and everything. Okay. And uh, um, most of the thing, the drums and the bass are played by yours truly, badly. <laughs> but then what really saves the track is Marte's vocals and then uh, Mr. Ilkka Virtanen, who is a producer friend of mine here in Finland and has more gold, gold records on his walls than anyone can possibly imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he basically came in and improvised the guitar track. Like, oh, wow. it's, I think there's only one edit yeah. in that guitar track. I mean, phenomenal job. And um, I was so thankful when he left my studio and I, I knew immediately that what he had added there was it raised the whole track into another level. So mm -hmm. teamwork at its best again. And um, the funny thing about uh, the track itself, both in Control and here, when I saw uh, Sam's lyrics, uh, this is something that I'm suggesting here. You look at the lyrics and you hear 
the melody in your head. Mm -hmm. That's happened now twice. And um, it's not, you know, sometimes you just, um, some Finnish sentences and words, they ring in your head in a certain way when you imagine some person uh, interpreting them, um, vocalizing them. Yeah. Such a smart Yes. Uh, so um, it's um, right away your brain goes into a melody mode and hey, this has to go like this. And when that has to go happens, mm -hmm. it never changes afterwards. So it stays like that. And no matter what I do, no matter how I try to lure my brain into another position, <laughs> whatever, it stays like that. Mm -hmm. So something gets cemented <laughs> right the very second I hear or actually see the lyrics. Actually, when I watch at the lyric sheet, I hear the lyrics in yeah. my head. Yeah. So um, it's difficult to explain. And then somebody's probably calling 911 already there. But I happen to have a synesthesia, so it helps. I was going to mention that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, mm -hmm. it definitely helps with things like that. Yeah. Yeah. I I think it's incredible that so much Finnish culture is in Alan Wake too, both in music, in mm. audio, and in like narrative and everything else. How does it make you feel as a as a Finn and as a Finnish musician to to have worked on a song like that and to have a song like that in out there and people loving it and people being so in like familiar with a part of your culture that that we we as foreigners have never experienced before because this I've never heard this type of music before. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well regarding tango for instance there are only a few countries in the world that's true yeah <laughs> which have been hit by tango like properly uh, argentina for instance yes <laughs> and yeah, well, uh, a finnish tango is quite different to it is, argentinian it is, tango it is and um uh, there is a difference between also expressing the, your emotions through movement and dancing and vocals and everything it, it tends to be much more on the physical side in in the latin america, america and here it's more subjective yes. it's more like internal movement rather than uh, you know well physical movement. yes yeah yeah the same applies with twang stuff for instance or or the guitar combo stuff it's in finland it's mostly pretty close to shoegazing combos nowadays. Okay, yeah. But of course, it being the 60s and there were never like a proper PA systems. They were like, mm -hmm. you had your guitar amplifier, you, you had your bass amplifier. And at times, the guys had to put their instruments in the same amp because they had the money. Okay. okay. So it, it creates a very lo-fi sound. And then the singer had, of course, his own way, own means to produce, you know, through the loudspeakers, mm -hmm. the sound. Uh, but the drummer had none. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So he basically had to play as hard as he could in order to push through that sound mm -hmm. wall mm -hmm. that consisted of the vocalist and the guitar player and the bass player. So it's a very, very complicated nature that trying to achieve as much as possible from as little as, you know, possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But those guys back in the day, I, I'm sure there were like 15, 20 groups traveling all over Finland, local groups that is, and they, I think they had gigs from Wednesday to Saturday. Okay. Around the year. Okay. So nice. they got quite a nice, you know, clientele, so to speak. Okay. <laughs> Right, Richard, did you have anything? No, I just to say when we were doing the session, um, it was the first time I'd sat in the uh, in the engineer's chair for a long, many, many years. Uh -huh. but I absolutely shit myself the whole way <laughs> So I don't know how this worked. Were you nervous? <laughs> and, uh, well, it's not nervous, nervous, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, on edge to make sure that everything got recorded. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah I, I, I remember that session very well. So, yeah. I mean, it was, luckily it all worked out. Um, yeah, it was like, I think, three takes and done, yeah, as far yeah, as I yeah. remember. But yeah, um, we have come to the portion of the stream where we take audience questions. So I see the chats oh, both God. on you. <laughs> I see the chats both on YouTube and Twitch are very active. So get those fingers ready and please write us in your questions for Richard and for Petri. And Julius will be uh, picking them out. Oh, they're coming very I'll fast. <laughs> <laughs> we will try to pick to pick them out and to answer them. Oh my goodness. Uh, oh. You guys, the people came ready. 
<laughs> oh, oh, oh. And uh, yeah, and then we'll we'll try to answer as many as we can, and then uh, we will say goodbye. But I think this is uh, is it this one? Is it this one that I'm looking at? I'm trying, but everything's going. So everything's fast. going so fast, everyone. We're trying. This is our first time doing this kind of thing, so. <laughs> God. Um, so please bear with us as we scroll up. And please, if you've posted your question once, don't spam it and don't post it again. We will find it and we will see it. <laughs> we will find you. <laughs> please, uh, th thoughts and prayers in chat for Julius as he scrolls through all of your questions. <laughs> I wish this thing stayed. <laughs> I know. That's, that's some scrolling over there. Do you want me to try something on my end? You got yes, this. Please. Okay, yeah. let's see. With the setup I have, it is a tad Let's different. see. Oh my <laughs> goodness. All right. Oh. Yeah, that's a lot. Oh, that's a lot. Okay, that's oh. a lot better. All right, hold. Hello. There. Let's see. The first one is from Very Good Dis. Let's see. <laughs> oh, what's the. Oh, this is great. Uh, what's the best approach to creating sounds that don't exist in the real world? For example, sounds of paranormal things. What were the difficulties associated with this and how did you overcome it? Yeah, how do you, Ooh. I think the dark presence might be a good, a a, good answer yeah. for this. Cause like, how do you, how do you figure out what the dark presence sounds like? And it's such an iconic and necessary sound in the game. Yeah, the dark presence in itself, we, um, Tazio actually did a lot of the work on that. And we and actually, one of our outsourcers, uh, Robert also works on dark presence sound. We were looking at, the dark presence is a manifestation of like Wake's words in a way. I don't know. Yeah, I've no, no, yeah, yeah. I'm getting very nervous about saying anything around it. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> so we kind of went towards that vocal way. So we were using the narrative, uh, basically the narrative of what where that thing came from, like the, the law of the game of law of the game of law of the world, to kind of direct us in the right direction for what it is. And of course, concept art as well. So mm -hmm. you, you can see it, and you you know what where the background is. So that gave us for the dark presence. It gave us a very very tangible base or foundation to work from. And then it's a lot of experimentation. Yeah, it's really good if you have movement and you can see how it's moving. If it's going fast or has jerky movements, so that can also dictate. And then you can start using, for instance, animal sounds or mm -hmm. insect sounds. For instance, if it's jerky and twitchy or something smoother in there. If not. Um, but how to do this just in general, this is one of the things that we have been dealing with a lot with Remedy Games. We tend yeah. to do it slightly weird stuff. And the weirdest, strangest thing I think I've ever had to try to design was actually Quantum Break, is what's the sound of the world when it's frozen? Yes! Which oh. is the hardest design question okay. we've ever mm. had, um, like I've ever had to deal with. Yeah. And me and Villa, um, He's realized like my right hand here at Remedies. Mm -hmm. We've been working together for years and years and years. We basically were completely lost with how to do this. But what we did in the end is I, I said, look, we both were going like, okay, we have every day we do 30 minutes of design and we just go something completely fresh and just blast it for 30 minutes and come out with a clip and then play it to each other and go like, is this it? Is this it? Is it? And we did it for a couple of weeks. And then we began to kind of like formulate like a, a library or an, an idea mm -hmm. or a language that we could use to describe these things. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and then in the end, we ended up with this kind of very loud, visceral, aggressive sound for, yeah. for time slowing down or for time stopping. But yeah, it's it's difficult. It's, it's really difficult. I mean, I'm not a great one for using references for other films or mm -hmm or particularly other games. I do use rest references for films, to be fair. And it's a good starting point. Mm -hmm. But if you want to try and make something that's unique, it's best not to try and copy. Mm -hmm. It's best to look at what that thing is. Yeah. Look at the law and find out as much about it from from what, you know, whatever genre or whatever you're, you're looking at. Yeah. And then build it from there and just try and pull ideas from it. And in the case of Dark Presence, it was from, it was from the law of the game. It was from the narrative. So it's you throw spaghetti at the wall and then you yeah. listen back to it and yeah. then you Does it work? brainstorm with yeah. with the team and see what yeah. works. Yeah, and you just have to be very, very, very kind of like real with yourself and ask, you know, you may really like it, like that sound because you made it and it was really hard to make. Yes. And that's why you like it, but that's not the you know, that's that doesn't help in a way. Yeah. What you want to know 
does it look right? Does if you have a concept art and you know the mm -hmm. background, does it feel right? Yeah, like and do I do I like this because yeah. I made it and I'm proud of it, or do, do I, like I like this it because it fits? fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the, mm -hmm. the fits bit, which is actually the hardest bit to come over, yeah. it really is because often it's like oh, I threw this together in two minutes and that works because mm -hmm. it's your first idea or like you know it's yeah it's a it's a difficult one, but yeah, I hope that kind of answers the question. I hope so. Uh, do we have some more, Yulu? I'm waiting for you to copy paste stuff. Shall I start from the top of that one? Go for it. Okay. There's something comforting about hearing instrumental versions of Ö Tön Ö at save points. How did you come up with the idea? If, you, if, we, don't, if we don't know an answer, um, we'll just skip it and thank them for the question. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. So I'm just trying yeah. to think what you're talking about. We were going to put the track with vocals in and decided not to. Mm-hmm. Um, because it, the voice is too evocative yes. and it would draw you too close. So we went with the kind of karaoke version, basically. Okay. And the idea is, again, it's what I was talking about earlier. It's about driving the player and having something recognisable yeah. to that. I think that, I think it's in Res one of the Resident Evils has a very similar idea. I think so. Yeah, I, I think, think it's, it's similar to Tim's humming as well. Mm -hmm. Like, you yeah. hear it and you're like, where yeah. is this coming from? I need to find it. Find Same it. with uh, the safe it's, points. Yeah, and we wanted to connect it through to Arty, of course. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's this kind of like bridge between, between okay. worlds. So, yeah, it was, uh, it wasn't me who came out with it. I think it was Kyle or Sam. Yeah, okay. Of. Kyle, our game director, and Sam, our creative, creative director. Creative, yeah. All right, I've got a question about fade outs. Um, was there any layering of different voices done on top of the shadowy vocal effect, or was it all one person? And then the person says the audio there was so cool. Oh, that's very tumbling. It's one person. It's one person, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything more. That's think. fine. I don't know what I can say about that. No, that's fair. Let's yeah. let's uh, <laughs> let's not reveal too much. Uh, let's see. What piece of music... Oh, my goodness. Uh, this is a question for everyone. What piece of music or of general media makes you cry like a soft little boy slash girl? I will say that I cry at so many things. Um... I will. I'll just get out, get this out of the way while you think of your answers. Uh, I'm I'm kind of like Petri, although I don't think I, I'm as big of a crier as you are. But for me, it's it's like a Pavl Pavlovian effect. Is one specific song. It is at the bottom of everything by Bright Eyes. It's about like. It starts with a with a narration and then it slowly builds into music and then there is a point in that. Um, where he goes, it's your birthday, happy birthday, darling. We love you very, 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 very much. And I start like tearing up at that. Mm. And then there's a bit later when he says, into the caverns of tomorrow with just our flashlights and our love, we must plunge, we must plunge, we must plunge. And that like destroys me, <laughs> but it's a good type of crying. What about you, Petri? <laughs> um, I've got quite a lot of tracks that do that to me, but what comes directly to mind is, uh... This is rather surprising, but Nine Inch Nails is uh, hurt. Oh, Ooh. good pull. Okay. And of course, uh, like millions of other tracks, but that sort of clicked immediately when I read the question. Yeah. And especially, well, there are several versions made of that track, but there's one one live version track. Mm -hmm. I can't remember. Was it? I saw them in Stuttgart back in 2000 something when mm -hmm. they were doing. Uh, Oh God, what was the tour's name? Anywho, anyway. it, it, I, I was literally a, a pond of tears right yeah. there on the field. <laughs> uh, I think that's Johnny something... Cash's version isn't bad either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You, you can hear that he's basically already giving up and he's an old geezer yeah. who's finally facing the final curtains. And Jesus, that hurts you. Yes. I've cried at gigs before. I think it's a great feeling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Richard, what about yourself? I really... That I, I, or are I, you a I, stoic? I'm quite stoic, mm -hmm. with, but I, I, I connect a lot of songs with moments in my life. Yeah. So I have certain so, key, yeah. key songs. Um, Big Country by Big Country, which is probably no one's ever heard of. It's, it's ancient. Uh, ancient. Actually, yeah. yeah. That's something I remember from my childhood. It's mm -hmm. probably the most evocative. Okay. Yeah. I've never heard of it, but I will look it up. Yeah. Big Country by Big, Big Country. Country yeah. yeah, if I even know the name of the track. Right? Okay. It, it's on Spotify. Okay. I, I listen All right. to it every now and again. Mm. Let's pick another question. Thank you, Julius, for your very hard work. Uh, let's see. How did you guys come up with the final voice effects for Scratch? He sounds amazing. Is that something we can talk about? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
<laughs> Actually, I'm not sure I can. I didn't do it. That's it. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's it. Trouble. Um, well, we didn't give him any any food for three days. Yeah. Yeah. No, not really. <laughs> I mean, we kept Ilka in a cage. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the voice, a lot of the voices in general in in Alan Wake are actually. I mean, we do process them in in real time afterwards, but it's okay. a lot actually from the direction mm. that we give the actor. Um, like the difference between Scratch and Wake um, mm. is is a prime example for that. But you can also look. I'm going to go on a bit of a tangent here, but okay. like how Saga's internal voice in her head and how she, her outspoken voices and how that's directed. Mm -hmm. it, so a lot, all, all the taken voices as well, a lot of that comes actually from, not from post-processing, but from the act direction itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so just people literally manipulating their own voices. Yeah. Um, though we do do post-processing on, for instance, on Scratch Voice, um, there is kind of distortion and compression and, mm -hmm. and EQ when we... We do manipulate it, but mm. I would say most of it, or most of the feeling of that voice, which is the most important part, is mm. actually coming from the performance. Well, basically, we try to outdo a Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Have we, do you feel like we've outdone Britney specifically? <laughs> no, <I don't. laughs> Where does that come from? <laughs> I have no idea. Um, with processing, a... I mean. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh. <laughs> I yeah. thought you were with me with the joke. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're really bad sidekick, sorry guys. Um, coming off of that, coming off of scratch, like one of the one person in chat said that one of the eeriest parts for them was the burning train in the dark place in the subway. Uh, yeah. How were the sounds for that part recorded? Because there's a lot of screaming and there's a lot of mm. people burning alive. Like it's very uncomfortable. That is actually my favorite part of the game. Really? Like, like, genuinely, <laughs> I, I'm so pleased that that came off the way it is. Okay. Like, like really, really, really cool. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, how it was kind of planned. So in the dark place, well, in the burning trains, but in the dark place in general, it's actually quite a static environment. You mm -hmm. move it quite slowly. Mm -hmm. We talked a lot about, like, how do we narrativize the world through audio, just through audio, like with nothing else. And with the burning train, for instance, you're actually just walking through a train. Okay, this bit grim because all the dead bodies it's a bit are. grim yeah yeah and we're going like okay what we could have just made the sound of the space but when i was chatting with the guys go like we really want to amp this up and like what what, what can we do so let's just tell the story of the thing that's happened i mean this is a, another kind of theme throughout the game we're, we're with audio we're trying to tell the story of the places that we've been and so yeah so then we said okay what happened here you know there's a lot of people in the train and we burnt it mm -hmm. you know how do we get that sound? So we yeah, we had a, a rather large Wallace session in London. Can you um, tell for the uninitiated oh, what, what the Wallace, Wallace session or loop session? They're also called loop sessions. Okay, but basically you get a group of actors together and they improvise a scene for you. Okay, um, and that can be anything. It's, 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 well, we have this all throughout the game. So yeah, like in the cafe where the background. Yeah, uh, yeah. In the cafe. okay. So we had a big Wallace session yeah. in London for the train. Uh, yes, or yeah. for the entire game. For the yeah, yeah. But, okay. But one of this was the train. We also used the same same Wallace session for all the, for instance, the uh, chanting of the mm. the cult, which is. Uh, mm. So we went to record all these things, but we got these actors in a room and said, "Okay, so you're going to be burnt alive," <laughs> 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 and, and that was it. And we just recorded about ten minutes of like eight Dreaming. actors pretending Dreaming. to be burnt alive. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they, they were a bit shocked when they read the cue sheet, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. But yeah, we just got a lot of the material and then uh, Gulli, one of our senior sound designers, stuck it all together and made okay. it work. But the pacing, I think, works really nicely in that scene. It's mm -hmm. just like the way you go through the first part of the train and then you hit the second and then it really takes off. Yeah. And then it stops immediately as you jump off the other side. Yeah. Over the other side. It's, yeah, really good piece of design. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask another question. As authenticated audio nerds, so I'm excluded from this question entirely, but what would you say has impacted you the most during your career audio-wise? And how you approach the project you have planned or have in your head? Do you have a dark cesspool within yourselves where you dip in for constant inspiration, or do you need to fill it with water to get to sediment instead of surface scum? Thanks, Kitos. That's a great question. Hmm. Yeah, so what what has impacted you the most audio-wise during your career? <laughs> um, <laughs> so much. It's mm. mm. a big question. Um, 
I'm waiting for Patrick to start. <laughs> so no, I, I, I actually, um, I remember seeing Alien for the first time. Mm -hmm. Everything related to that, especially face hugger coming out of the egg. Yes. Uh, uh, I mean, back in the day when the movie theaters weren't that good and, and, and the loudspeaker system was about mm -hmm. whale cardboard boxes. Mm -hmm. And still it managed to uh, disgust the hell out of me. And um, also the score of the movie was awesome. That was like yeah. something that hasn't been done before. Or And to be precise, not not anything had had quite the same effect after that as well. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it was a landmark on my route from kid to I don't know what am I nowadays. <laughs> How, what did Baboon. you think, Giza? Baboon. <laughs> Richard, what about you? <laughs> I really you don't know. I'm, 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 I've got no idea. <laughs> okay. I, I'm, I really, that's stumped me completely. Oh. I don't know. I've got a few things that I. Uh, it's really difficult to answer. Mm. I did a, I did um, I spent a, a year in Amsterdam studying with some really, really great people there. Then the SAE in Amsterdam, okay, which really opened my eyes to like game audio and mm. and engineering and that. That's probably the the thing which, yeah, the, uh, like on a practical level, mm -hmm. that that was really turned me into game audio and how to do that. But I don't know. I I, I don't think there's anything individual that I could say like yeah it's it's I don't know, I just, no that's a good answer it, studying and yeah, opening, yeah, yeah, your, opening your mind yeah. to it mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. listening a lot yeah I, talking about the cesspool yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, oh yeah the do you have yeah. a dark cesspool where you dip in for inspiration or do you need to fill it to get to sediment instead of surface scum that's a very poetic question yeah mm -hmm. I think a quite a big cesspool, cesspool <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, let's see Oh my goodness. Uh let me let me pick a question. We're running a little bit out of time. Let's see. What was the biggest difference? I think this is a good one. What was the biggest difference when making sound for control compared to Alan Wake 2? Like new challenges to overcome from the stuff you've done on control to now Alan Wake 2. I know there's been a lot of things we innovated on audio-wise in control, and a lot of things we innovated on those innovations in Alan Wake 2 with, with like the Northlight engine and with everything mm. we can do. So mm. if any, mm. if there's anything you can both speak on when it comes to that. I, yeah, I didn't actually work on control, but I know I, I was aware of what was going yeah, on yeah, at yeah. the time. Mm. So, so I'm gonna talk on behalf of other people now. Okay. But uh, Control and Alan Wake are really different games. I mean, conceptually they're quite, from an audio perspective, they're quite separated. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, Control, because of that kind of new weird vibe it had, we felt that we we had a lot of um, kind of room to experiment with, particularly technically as well, so like with the music system. Yeah. We could get away with quite a lot of really quite crazy design in a more abstract way. And I would say that Alan Wake is more grounded. It's much more grounded in the real world and well, apart from Dark Place, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it has a, a bigger grounding in the narrative and the law and, and the real world. I think Control was a new IP as yes, well. Yes, yes. So we, yeah, and that, that to me, I would say is the biggest difference between the two. And because of that, I would say we were building on the technology, but the conceptual idea is actually really different. Mm -hmm. So, and I'd like to think of projects, you know, each project you go into is kind of like a new thing. What yep. does this project need? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. We take a lot of the knowledge that we have from the other games, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we actually mm -hmm. build on top. Okay. But we, we we try and approach it like, what does this project actually need? And then use our collective experience to mm -hmm. to work out what things we're going to borrow from. And what we're not. I'm not sure I answered that question, but... Mm -hmm. I, I think it's important for the whole mm -hmm. company not to repeat something like... Uh, mm -hmm. As is, yeah. Of course, there has to be references between the projects, of mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. But for instance, when it comes to soundtracks or scores of yeah. the different games, uh, actually, when you think of the continuation from Alan Wake to Quantum Break to Control to Alan Wake Two, there's a, there has been a lot of change. Oh yeah. I, mm -hmm. And also in terms of when it comes to sound yes. itself, and um, most of it is because everything needs to be done from scratch. Mm -hmm. uh, not Mr. Scratch, but, you know. <laughs> and then sort of try to... I'm not using the word reinvent, 
but we have to find different angles in order to expand the you know universe in which we are i'm referring to rcu here remedy yes Connected yes remedy universe. Connected universe, yeah. yes and and it, it doesn't have to sound similar all the time because there are different phenomena and, and different locations different people um, everything that happens within rcu is actually quite natural to rcu so mm -hmm. and there are different actors different actions different events different whatever so different point of view or perspective is really important for both yeah. the audio team as well as the well story team yeah. for instance and there are two projects within remedy history that sort of look alike well okay alan looks like alan of course but he's an exception mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I have a final question. Thank you, everyone, for your questions. So sorry we didn't get to all of them. Uh, there's only a finite amount of time. I will learn for next stream and open up questions sooner. But I think this is a final question. So Richard and Petri, from the audio team's perspective, what were your biggest achievements with Alan Way 2? Whenever I ask devs these questions, everyone goes kind of... <laughs> Stripping it. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's what I'm thinking. Agreed. No. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Fair enough. But like, what are you most happy about when it comes to the game's sound? Like one thing, because you you mentioned the the you mentioned the train, you mentioned the yeah. canopy, the rain canopy sounds. Mm. Honestly, what I'm most happy about is the reception. It's what the players think. Mm. On, uh, I'm I'm absolutely humbled and gobsmacked by by how well it's been received. We yeah. did not mm. expect it. Yeah, we really didn't, and that's that's for me. It's it's the biggest achievement mm. for sure. That it's it's so well received, and yeah, it's really humbling. Mm. True. Yeah. Hmm. I actually, I'm I'm trying to look for the right words here, uh -huh. but, but um, personally, one of the things that sort of nailed the feeling to me was the uh, opening sequence of. The whole game yeah which uh, actually defined the basic instrumentation for the rest of the game more or less okay but um yeah i don't know i'm still really happy to you know have done work for the cinematics here and there so mm -hmm. i can't name just one but that that is something i'm really i'm not sure if the proud is the right word but it sort of made a very strong point. Hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a very strong opening. I think it's the strongest. Not uh, like all of our games are amazing, obviously, mm. but I think it's the strongest opening we have in in at least the games that I've played. At least the games that yeah, I've worked there, on. There's a serious WTF factor when it comes to you know yes vertical thing and the rain yeah. happening sideways. And yeah, yeah. Then the naked guy there yes <laughs> um but i think that's gonna do for us any pying words from the both of you <laughs> thank you obviously thank you so much for coming thank you for taking in the time out of your very busy days to come and sit with me here for two hours and chat and shoot the shit i can say it now uh but yeah <laughs> it's always a pleasure to talk to you and to hear about your expertise so Thanks, Peter. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Of course. Uh, shall we chat, Julius? Shall we raid? Yes, we can yeah. raid. Um, Let's see who's playing Alan Wake Two. Should mention when the next. Stream oh yes, the next stream. And what when is about. when is the next stream? Next stream is in two weeks. It is in two weeks. What date? Is, um, let me see the calendar. The second of May. Okay, the next stream is on the second of May, and I will be with Ansi Mata and Miko Rikonen, who are from our cinematics and live action team. And we will be talking about exactly that. We'll be talking about cinematics and we'll be talking about live action. So we'll be talking about the short film, the Koskala Brothers commercial, the musical, um, everything, the everything. We'll, we'll see We'll see what we cover because there is a lot. Uh, but yeah, tune in in two weeks on, I've forgotten the day again. Help. 2nd of May. 2nd of May. Uh, follow us on socials you know where to find us and uh, please stick with us for the raid while julius finds someone who's playing alan wake 2 and let's uh if you're on twitch if you're on youtube bye not to... <laughs> if you're on twitch please stick with us for the raid let's find someone who's playing alan wake 2 and give them hopefully a nice surprise
Let's see. Let's tag this. Let's do that. Copy to this. Yeah, yeah. Copy. Do we have a raid message? We still don't have a raid no. message. <laughs> what should oh, I? No. I I know we have a raid raid message. Okay. Uh hold up. Raid message. Ritually you are. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, okay. Yes, okay. <laughs> put that in chat, everyone. When everyone put, this is the ritual to lead you on in chat, and when we raid over to the next channel, that's what we're spamming. <laughs> that's fantastic. Cool. Yes. Gonna, gonna okay. End with the launch trailer, so. Okay, end it with the launch trailer. Thank you, everyone, once again for coming. Thank you, Petri. Thank you, Richard. And I'll catch you in two weeks. Uh, enjoy the raid. Bye. <laughs>